going on, everyone? Well, that was an underwhelming uh, NBA trade deadline for the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers got no moves done. Uh, and it looks like the Lakers are going into the offseason with three first-round picks in the hopes to acquire Donovan Mitchell. That seems to be the idea. That seems to be the plan going forward. Uh, personally, I didn't think the Lakers would do nothing. Like I thought the Lakers would at least make some small move. None of the big name players really got moved, which I thought was interesting. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens with the buyout market and all that stuff. We'll dive into that here in a moment. First thing I want to talk talk about is the Donovan Mitchell aspect of this. I don't like if that's the plan here. If they were like, ah, no, we'll just go get Donovan Mitchell and everything will be okay. Right, like, what's your backup plan? Because more likely than not, the Lakers aren't going to get Donovan Mitchell. Yes, the Lakers would have three first-round picks and three pick swaps. Uh, they'd also have all their seconds since they didn't trade any of them, so they'd have like four or five seconds at that point. And yes, that's, on the surface, sounds like a lot of picks. But then you see like the Brooklyn Nets, and they have like eight tradable firsts, and players that would just be higher valued for a team like the Cavs who wouldn't be rebuilding. They'd be trying to continue to compete and win. Uh, and then you look at a team like the Knicks, who basically just ran by everybody in this trade deadline. Uh, I mean, they got OG, they got Alec Burke, they got Boyan Bogdanovich. Uh, the Knicks are already going to be pretty scary, pretty terrifying. And you add in the fact that you know, they have all nine, if I'm not mistaken, of their first round picks. Uh, that's just <laughs> not a good spot for uh, the Lakers to be in. When it's like the two teams that Donovan Mitchell wants to go to more than anybody can easily outbid you. And they'll also have Boyan's $19 million contract that they could use to kind of package together and do whatever they have to to go get Donovan Mitchell. It's just... I don't like the idea of the Lakers, oh, let's just wait around for Donovan Mitchell, right? Now, look, if the Lakers end up landing Donovan Mitchell, then I guess in hindsight, it was great. And we'll all be happy and we'll all celebrate and we'll all talk about how great it was. And, you know, or, you know, maybe another star becomes available, right? Point is, if the Lakers get a third star in the offseason, then this was worth it. If they don't, then that becomes a real problem. And then on top of that, you add in the fact that LeBron James and Anthony Davis are having the, one of the best seasons of their careers. I mean, literally, LeBron James is having the best efficiency he's had since like 2016 or something like that. And then you add in Anthony Davis, he's having the most, the best efficiency he's had since the bubble. Who's to say that that's going to happen next year? LeBron's going to be a year older, LeBron and AD have been very healthy this thus far this season, you know, knock on wood. And so the concern is, is like, there's no guarantee that you're going to have all that next year. Also, there's no guarantee that Donovan Mitchell even leaves or that the Cavs actually try to trade him, right? Like they might take their chances or go try to make a big move in, in the, uh, in the off season to try to keep Donovan Mitchell. I mean, they're the two seed in the East right now. I think that changes with all the moves that the Knicks made. But, hey, look, if the Cavs get to the conference finals or something like that, they may just run it back. They may just take the chance that Donovan Mitchell leaves, right? Because it's like, where are you going to go? Teams don't have salary. So guess what? You're stuck. So, I mean, that's kind of – that. that's my frustration, right? I, I get that, you know, there, there wasn't the big impact move. Atlanta ended up keeping DeJounte Murray, and that was the big play. Look, I said this going into the trade deadline. I trust Rob Palenka, right? If there's something there, Rob Palenka would have gotten the deal done. If there wasn't, he wasn't going to do anything. And clearly there wasn't any moves that made sense for the Lakers. All the big names, you know, Bruce Brown, DeJounte Murray, like those guys didn't end up getting traded. DeMar DeRozan didn't end up getting traded. All those guys are still with their respected teams. And who got traded that's really making an impact for the Lakers? The only moves that like I kind of was like, ah oh, man, I wish the Lakers would have got them is like Daniel Gafford and like Royce O'Neal were the two like 
big ones where I was like, ah, oh, man, like that, that would have been nice. But here's the thing. Look at the pieces that the opposing teams got in those deals. The Lakers, what do they have that these teams are going to want in something like that? You know, like that, that's something else you got to keep in mind also. You know, it's nice to go, man, I really want to get, you know, this player or that player, whatever. And it's like, okay, well, how are you acquiring these guys? Because all your contracts are either vet minimum contracts or they're more heavy loaded contracts that you now need to use to to get other salary and it just it just becomes so much more complicated than just a straightforward here's this I mean even the Royce O'Neal deal with the with the uh the Phoenix Suns right like that was like this convoluted three-team deal that like the Lakers just wouldn't have been in a position to make and so get like what was there that the Lakers realistically could have gotten I just there wasn't a deal that got made this trade deadline that I looked at and went okay that's that's the deal like, man, the Lakers should have really jumped on that. Because all the deals that happened, the Lakers realistically probably weren't going to be able to get any of those deals. All the guys that got moved, I mean, could you have overpaid with seconds because they had like three or four seconds to trade? Sure, but why? What's the point? Like, what value you get? What are you getting out of it? To me, I think based on how this played out, based on how this unfolded, I think it was in their best interest to do what they did, which was stand pat. If you could have gotten a DeJounte Murray and a Dorian Finney-Smith and a Royce O'Neal or whatever, you could have gotten pieces that made sense for the assets that we have and the tradable pieces that we have, then sure, right? But the Lakers didn't want to trade Austin Reeves. Personally, I would have traded Austin Reeves for DeJounte Murray. That's just me. And tried to see how D'Lo and, and Murray looked. And if it didn't work well, then you know you could always just go trade for Donovan Mitchell still if you wanted to in the off season, but nonetheless, like outside of that, again, I, I just don't see any move that I'm like, oh man, like the Lakers could have gotten in on that and just dropped the ball there again, personally. Um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm disappointed, you know, that, that DeJounte Murray, uh, ended up staying with the Atlanta Hawks. I actually pers again, personally thought that, the Lakers that the Lakers would have landed him because I didn't think that they were going to want to go through what happened with uh, John Collins, right? Where you saw with what happened with John Collins was you they had opportunities to trade him, they chose and elected not to trade him, and at the time they could have gotten a pretty good deal and ultimately so, uh, sold him for you know, a quarter of what they originally would have gotten. And it was like, if they would have just had done the deal when they could have, or when they originally should have, then they would have gotten a nice return. But now, you didn't get anything. And that's kind of the risk that they're taking with DeJounte Murray, in my opinion. Right? They didn't get any deals that they wanted. You saw all these teams kind of come out of the woodworks and try to see if they could snatch away DeJounte Murray. And they weren't willing to accept any of the deals. But here's the problem. Most of those teams are probably going to already have it figured out. Like if the Lakers get DeJount, if the Lakers get Donovan Mitchell, then they don't have a need for DeJounte Murray at that point. So they're out of the race, right? Obviously the Phil the Sixers and all these other they're probably gonna be out. I mean, it is very possible Atlanta could end up being stuck with DeJounte Murray. And they're, uh, you know, they're nothing more than a play-in team at best. It's just, again, what was what was the point? But I, I look, I'm am I disappointed? Of course. Did I want to trade? Of course. Did I want something to get done that that I felt was an upgrade? Of course. But I just, I think personally, again, based on everything that we saw, based on how this played out, I again, personally, believe the Lakers made the right decision. I think the Lakers made the right call. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think the Lakers made the right call, made the right move? Do you think, no, they should have done something. They should have figured something out. You know, no trade is better than a bad trade. And that's something we talked about um, 
for weeks now. Again, I thought we were going to get something done. We didn't. It's it's unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. Let's go. Let's turn the season around. I still, look, believe in this team. I still believe we get to the playoffs. I'll take my chances. I've said it the entirety of the way. Um, do I believe the Lakers are a, a bona fide contender? No, if I'm being honest, I don't. But, hey, things can change. Season can get turned around. You got the buyout market. Not saying that a buyout option is going to change the tide for the Lakers, but you might be able to get a quality piece too. There's a lot of names on the buyout market that we'll dive into here uh, in the next day or so. But again, I feel what your thoughts are. Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one.